Hey everybody, welcome to season three, episode one of Around the Verse. I'm Sandy Gardner, VP of Marketing. Hi, and I'm Chris Roberts, CEO and Project Director of Star Citizen Squadron 42, and uh, guest co-host today. <laughs> For season three, we've decided to change up Around the Verse's format to show you more of the development in progress, directly from the screens and mouths of the devs themselves. Um, so each week's gonna have a weekly studio report that will rotate between each of our four studios, a rotating segment that will focus either on ships, environments, character, visual effects, or props. And finally, each episode will have a deep dive on a feature that is up and coming in Star Citizen of Squadron 42. Anyway, it's taken some effort to organize, but I'm pretty excited about this new format as it's gonna allow all of you to see a lot more of what I see on a daily basis, which is pretty cool. Cool, so speaking of that, what is going on in Star Citizen this week? Uh, okay, well, lots of things have been going on. Um, last week, we just wrapped the last of the PCAP pickups for Squadron 42 at Ealing Studios in London. We've got some great stuff, and uh, it's kind of funny, but David Haddock tells me between all the additional mission dialogue and NPC wild lines, um, we are now at 1,255 pages of script, which is about three times as much as Wing Commander 4. Uh, we also managed to get some additional capture for the Persistent Universe while we were shooting. That'll help flesh out the NPCs and life in the various locations you can visit in the near future. Uh, so on a closer to home basis, on the SC Live Alpha release, it looks like we may have just solved one of the more difficult to crack bugs that have been holding up sharing the current 2.5 build with the Evocati. Uh, so if that goes well, we should go to a wider PTU sometime next week and a full live release shortly after that. Uh, we've also been hard at work on a lot of other stuff, some of which we're pretty excited to share with all you guys at Gamescom. So, um, so hold, hold tight for that. Uh, but right now, uh, we should go to Eric uh, Kyron Davis, who's going to give you the LA Studio um, update. Hey, everybody, and welcome back to Los Angeles. I am senior producer Eric Kyron Davis here with your weekly update. We've got quite a busy week across the entire studio and all the disciplines, so let's just dive in. Our design and engineering teams have been really busy with multiple items, and one of them is atmospheric flight. The implications of this feature are really exciting the whole team, and here's lead tech designer Kirk Tomei and senior physics engineer John Pritchett to walk you through it. We've begun implementation of the first stage of our atmospheric flight model. Ships that look like they can take advantage of atmosphere handle better than those that don't. This means that more aerodynamic ships maneuver better because of how they utilize drag, and they can roll and pitch better in atmosphere than they can in space. Less aerodynamic ships work harder against drag and suffer decreased acceleration and maneuverability. Uh, John will allow design to tune the characteristics on a per ship basis, so ships that look like the Gladius will handle, handle vastly different than the, like those that look like the Starfarer. Atmospheric density increases the closer you get to planetary surfaces and will include pockets of varying densities, so we'll have fluctuations such as wind and turbulence. Your ship's max safe speed decreases as atmospheric density increases, so you want to play, uh, pay close attention to the velocity and altitude of your ship, otherwise you risk damaging the ship while in flight. So I've been working on the uh, atmospheric flight model for ships, and uh, the main thing is uh, our goal with that system is not to create uh, ships that fly by aerodynamics, not like an aircraft, but it's really more for our spaceships when they enter atmosphere. We want uh, the flight model to take into account, uh, you know, drag and, uh, you know, at some point possibly lift, you know, kind of change the way the ships feel in atmosphere. And uh, so the first step for that was a, a way to calculate the uh, cross-sectional area for the spaceship on all three of its, its main axes. So you've got the front, side, and top. And uh, that's largely what determines the amount of drag for a ship. I mean, that's, that's going to be dynamically calculated. So if a ship blows a wing off or something, that's going to change and not only the amount of surface area, but also where the drag force is being applied relative to the center of mass, which will create really interesting uh, flight conditions. But every ship, you know, based on its structure, it's, some ships are going to be more aerodynamic, something like the Gladius, you know, they're, they're designed more like, a, like an aircraft. Uh, some ships are, are going to fly more like a bus, you know, and you're really going to feel that. And that all comes out of the, the cross-sectional area for the ship. There are some things that we can tune into that, like, uh, you know, different types of materials might have like a different drag coefficient. So we can, we can kind of modify ships, tweak their performance a little bit. But, but mostly I think that it's going to be defined based on, on the, the actual structure of the ships. All of those things we'll be able to do with our fully flushed out atmospheric flight in place is really going to bring the Star Citizen universe together. Next up is our animation director, Steve Bender, with updates not only on the ship's animation, but also the Persistent Universe. Yeah, last week what you saw is you saw um, some animations that we showed for the enter and the exits of the ships. 
for the upcoming milestones, what we're working on is we're working on taking all that motion capture that we shot about a month ago and we told you about previously, and we're getting that into each of those ships. And the first ships that you're gonna start seeing that on are the Hornet and the Super Hornet and the Freelancer. So for the Persistent Universe, we're also working on life animations, things such as uh, behind the bar, at a booth, sitting in chairs, uh, leaning against walls, various things within the Persistent Universe that are going to give the whole thing life uh, just in, in, on the planets in general and things like that. That faster speed of our enters and the new life they're breathing in the Persistent Universe, that's really going to bring everything to well alive. Our final update for the Los Angeles studio is the update to the male base model. So here's our character art director, Josh Herman, to walk you through some really exciting updates. So after finishing up the female sculpt, we really wanted to give the male kind of the same level of quality. So James Koo, who also did the female, uh, did another pass on the male. He did a new high poly sculpt, a new low poly, new texturing, which he's in the middle of right now, uh, using Mari. It's looking really, really good. Um, we just wanted to give the male the same quality that the female did. So all the new, this new male, as you'll see, uh, we've really focused on the hands because being in first person, we want to make sure that all that uh, looks really good. So when you're you know, using, doing any animations, it, it looks super solid. Um, you know, he's a little bit more fit. You know, a lot of our characters are going to be in the military, so he should look like he hit the gym. You know, he should be a fit guy. Uh, I think this new sculpt really does hit that bar, and I think it looks a lot better. And I'm really excited for it, and I think we'll have it for you guys soon. The base characters are looking really terrific. And with the implementation next on the agenda, well, it's only a matter of time. Well, that does it for Los Angeles for this week. Thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you all next time. It's a cool update. So in other news, the free fly just finished up. Also, Britizen Con happened this weekend, just gone, in Manchester, and check out these photos. And on top of that, we had a PC Games magazine cover that came out in Germany, yeah, that Chris was there for, so check out the cover. It unfortunately is in German, so if you do speak German, great. If not, there are some great translations out there, but so check there that are. out. I think all our fans already translated <laughs> A dozen times on various different places, our forums, on Reddit, wherever else. So. There you go. And Austin Bar Citizen also happened, and Tyler tells me that was very successful and it was a lot of fun, so check out the pictures on that. Gamescom, party details. They just went out to concierge and subscribers. Tickets are going on sale in three batches, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Sunday is the ticket batch for everybody, so hopefully everybody gets a shot at getting a ticket. We really look forward to seeing you there. We will have our Chris uh, hosting the show. <laughs> And um, as always, yes, and also the Big Benny's. Um, we had quite a bit of a reaction from the subscribers about the Big Benny's t shirts and the patches, and a request to have more and some of the smaller sizes. So, check out those. Alexis has organized that for tomorrow at noon PST. Who would have known noodles would be so big? I know. Well, it's, it actually is pretty cool, and there was a little. Um, yeah clip on our YouTube channel, our Star Citizen YouTube channel. And speaking of our Star Citizen YouTube channel, uh, Wednesday we had the Subscriber Town Hall, which was with our LA character um, art team. So that is available on our um, Star Citizen YouTube channel. And finally, let's kick it over to ShipShape. Two point five is right around the corner. One of the exciting things is going to be the Reliant being flight ready. Now, Dave Hobbins actually hooked us up with some really awesome concept art, and then the team around the world has been making this ship come to life. Now, the interesting thing about this ship is it's Sion technology influence, right? And we've only seen one other ship before that's in Sion, and everyone knows it's a Scout. So, you know, these ships are multi-state. They're transforming. They're unique, they're different, they fly different. So the Reliant is a ship that I was really excited to get my hands on because I think Hobbins did a great job with the design um, and I think the flight mode is pretty interesting as well. Uh, so my team here in LA, we did a lot of the heavy lifting on the modeling and a lot of the preliminary anim animations. And of course, we had teams all around the world touching it in Austin doing animations and in the UK doing textures for the materials. Uh, so we brought it all together here. Uh, one really cool detail about the Reliant, which some people might not notice is, I mean, obviously it has a vertical flight mode, but because of the vertical flight mode, uh, the engines have reverse thrusts on the front side of them that act as retro thrusts to slow the ship down. 
Uh, when it's in horizontal mode, the front of those engines are covered up. So in order to achieve retro thrust, we have a shunting system that takes the thrust and redirects it to the front of the wings where we open up flaps that function as retro thrust as well. So look out for those, those are pretty cool. You know, leading up to this uh, point, I'd been working on a uh, refactor for, for uh, tuning for all the ships. And so I was able to work in uh, the ability to support uh, multiple flight states for our ships. And uh, we've used that for the Reliant. And now that we have that, we should, uh, that'll open us up to do a lot of uh, other ships with multiple flight states as well. When you're coming in for a landing, doing really close precision flight, you'll be flying that in the horizontal mode of the ship. And then when you've taken off cleanly from a landing pad, then uh, you'll you know, hit your landing toggle, go into the vertical mode, and you'll have the full performance of the ship available to you. So what this actually is going to mean is we have our, you know, our precision, our SCM, and our cruise modes. So when you're in the horizontal mode, you're going to be locked into precision. You don't get to go the top speed of the ship and it's very constrained in what you're going to be able to do movement-wise. And we've also made sure that you aren't going to accidentally, you know, like pitch forward too quick and flip onto the roof of your ship and blow up because that's just not fun. Uh, so you'll, you'll take off and then you'll hit N, which is our new default key for toggling the landing mode. Uh, and then from there you'll go into your full flight mode where you'll have the full performance of the ship and your full SCM cruise speed, uh, be able to go into quantum travel, now, there is one thing that we did have to restrict a little bit while you're in the flight mode, and that's actually getting in or out of the pilot or co-pilot seats. Uh, so just because of the space of the Reliant cockpit, it's really tight in there uh, when it's transformed. And so you will have to go into your landing mode before either the pilot or the co-pilot can get out of the seats. It may be something that we can expand on in, in the future, but for right now, it's just how we were able to get the ship flying while also having these transformational elements. Uh, also into the future, we're definitely hoping to get it set up where the horizontal mode can be a full, uh, a full speed capable mode of travel. But we wanted to make sure we were at least delivering, hey, you've got this toggling transition state for the flight ready, uh, even if you know, one of the modes you don't get to have that full speed potential. So really looking forward to you guys getting your hands on this ship in the coming patch. We're really proud of the Reliant and the hard work that everyone at CIG has put into it. We cannot wait to see what you guys think of it, as well as we can't wait to see you guys out there flying it around. So hope you guys like it as much as we've loved making it. Hey there, Tyler Whitkin, Community Manager in the Austin, Texas studio, here to bring you this week's MVP. A huge congratulations to Glantor Enzo for creating some awesome reference cards to assist in learning the updated in-game control scheme. These things are very useful. I went ahead and printed them out myself and have them hanging right next to my desk. So, congratulations again. You're this week's MVP. Back to you guys. So, with 2.5, we have Grim Hex, which is a new location for us. Uh, it's totally different than everything else. Uh, it's grungier, it's dirtier, it's counterculture, it's, it's unique to, to Star Citizen right now. We don't have anything else like it. Um, so because of that, we want to have it have unique clothing. Uh, it's, and it should reflect the environment. It should be grungier, it should be dirtier. So Jeremiah did a bunch of concepts for us, uh, and we picked a couple, and we're going to use those as our starting point uh, for Grim Hex. And it's only going to build from there. Uh, the thought process for uh, the Grim Hex, Grim Hex clothing was uh, to be something different, to show our, our fan base something different compared to the, uh, the one you see in Cassava for Port Olisar. And we wanted to do something that you could uh, express yourself a lot differently through your clothing. So I get the clothing uh, from Jeremiah Concepts, taking his ideas and illustrations and converting them into the game asset geometry. Using his designs, I can create logos and illustrations to make variations of RPU clothing that community can buy and wear and apply to their characters. I can add in-game uh, wear and dirt to the clothing to kind of give it variation as players continue to wear it. And so we looked at a lot of references like Blade Runner. Uh, we also looked at a lot of uh, street wear. And also uh, we're introducing a little bit more to the lore, which is we introduced uh, some band t-shirts. Uh, so you guys have already seen already from our sneak peeks. Uh, we have the Lido's and we also have the Gutter Wash. And so we designed some, uh, some band t-shirts. Some of them are a little explicit than others, um, as you can see, but uh, just to 
spice things up a bit and having just diff the same uh, design language and forms and shapes tend to make things a lot boring. So we did the complete opposite of what it's in cassava. So we did a lot of um, a grunge, uh, a lot of uh, angular shapes, and a lot of, uh, like, I don't care, that type of expression. We wanted to show that through our clothing. Because uh, the clothing is the Grim Hex uh, kind of outlaw community, uh, I choose very dark, desaturated colors to kind of emphasize what the logos are and kind of how the clothing uh, appeals to that certain uh, category of our universe. Um, so based on uh, Jeremiah's designs and the Grim Hex clothing, uh, a lot of the t-shirts um, relate to certain bands that are in our universe, like Gutterwash and uh, the Lidos. Um, so if you ever wore a band t-shirt, they're going to kind of be darker colors, uh, reds, greens, and have a lot of skulls on them. And so, you know, we have a lot of cool new stuff. We have some, you know, some little combat stuff, some cyberpunk stuff. Um, and we're just going to kind of keep building on that library, but it's not cool just because of Grim Hex. Like this is the starting point for everything. This is the starting point for all our future locations. So every location you go to in the future is going to have its own unique clothing. So you can go anywhere in the universe and you'll have unique clothing and people will know where you got that from. Be sure to tune in to Reverse the Verse tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. Pacific on Twitch. We have a new and improved format where we're going to have Eric Kyron Davis as the host and two special dev guests who were on, featured on today's show. So come check that out and ask your questions. It will be like a Q&A format and a little bit of a community update at the end. So do that. And as a little side note, we would like to wish Ben Lesnick a very, very speedy recovery. Um, and uh, we want you back in the office as soon as you can. But we looking after your health first. Yep, so. health first, but um, it'll be good to have you back, Ben. So I'm glad you're doing better and uh, best wishes from everyone here and I'm sure the community too. So um, with that, that's the end of the show. As always, we need to thank subscribers for making the show possible in the first place. And I'd like to also thank backers out there for enabling us to be building the game of all our dreams, all the devs that are making it, all you guys out there. Um, we're building something incredible and special that no publisher would ever allow you to be able to build. And that won't be possible without everyone that has backed the game so far. So hopefully you've liked the, the new format. Um, we'll be doing a lot more of this. Uh, I'm pretty excited by it. It's really great to show everyone what we're working on. And uh, we'll see you next week. Bye. <laughs>